I would tell you to sit, but then I'm going to tell you to stand back up for the word of the Lord. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you, for darkness shall cover the earth, a thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. Your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the seas shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall come over you. The young camel of Midian and Eva, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. You take a seat. Today we're celebrating Epiphany. Epiphany Sunday. A lot of people want to know, what is the Epiphany? Well, I will tell you. Uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, you probably already recognized it. In the scripture that we just read, there's a prophecy by the prophet Isaiah who's talking about the coming of a Savior. And then he's also talking about this light that comes, and it's a radiant light that comes to all of the people. And then he talks about the nations, the kings will come and bring them gold and frankincense and myrrh. So you understand the story. We just went through it at Christmas where we got to celebrate the coming of our Savior. Then we spent time together in here last week proclaiming our covenant with the Lord our God, renewing our faith once for all delivered to the saints. We proclaimed in our heart of hearts and in our truths of truths that we would follow God all the way until the ends of the earth, that we would proclaim him king of our lives and Lord over everything. If you missed the covenant service, go back and watch it. Proclaim that covenant. Nicole and I actually did something pretty awesome. I don't know that we did it intentionally, but I was praying and I started watching the service again. Uh, and as the countdown went down to zero, we finished the last words of the covenant. So we made covenant coming into the new year to the Lord our God. And then I looked over at Nicole and I made a covenant to her as her husband of what I would do in this year to come and who I would be. And so we had the opportunity to bring in the new year in that way and it's a wonderful opportunity and experience. So if you didn't see it, go check it out. Uh, you can check it out on our YouTube page. Uh, it'll be there. Today we celebrate the coming of our Lord and Savior in the radiance of the glory of the Lord. Arise. And shine. Rise and shine. Give God the glory, glory, rise. Right? That's some of the songs, but some of you sing it like this Arise, I'll shine after you. Give me coffee, coffee. <laughs> there are some people in relationships who can wake up at four o'clock in the morning and arise and shine as if everything, or sometimes as you wake up earlier, on beknownst to anyone else as to why, because you think you hear a noise, and so then you're arising and you're shining, and you go to arise and shine the other person in your household, and you say, arise and shine, and they say, get out of my face, give me coffee. I won't tell you who's who, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Your light has come. During this time, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of reference of what's happening, the, the back end of this. See, this prophecy is coming to the Israelite people where Isaiah is telling them uh, that God is saying, like, arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has come upon you. These Israelite people are said to be God's chosen people, the ones that were chosen by God that he would be with them always and that he would leave into their hands this, this land that they can find, this promised land. 
that he would always be with them in covenant and spirit, that his presence would always be with them. And at this moment in the lives of the Israelites, what they're seeing is dissension. They're seeing division because the kingdom is separated at this time. Uh, the kingdom, the, the upper kingdom has left and been captive and not too long from this point, the southern kingdom will soon be taken over and into uh, slavery again. And the Israelite people really don't feel like arising and shining. Matter of fact, they're more like arise and flicker, arise and glimmer, arise and snooze for five more and then maybe, or off and wake up 15 minutes before you have to be at church. Arise, maybe. Sometimes we just don't feel like adulting. Just like the Israelites, they didn't feel like arising and shining and giving God the glory because to them, God had not kept his promises. In fact, to them, God had forsaken them. God had left them. They don't recognize that the glory of the Lord had been with them throughout it all. It actually began way back with Abraham when God shone himself in this steaming pot that they went through the two sacrifices and that meant to Abraham, hey, I'm always going to be with you. Don't worry, I'm making this promise that I'll be with you. And then to Moses, the glory of the Lord shone in a burning bush where he tells Moses, I need you to go and take my people out of Egypt. And then he showed up to Moses again and the Israelite people, these same Israelite people that he was with him and the glory of the Lord was with him in a pillar of smoke and a pillar of fire. And then the parting of the Red Sea, the glory of the, the Lord was shown. And then as Moses got to the other side and went up to the mountain, the glory of the Lord shone on these two tablets and he came down to give them the law for his people because he loved them. The glory of the Lord then shone upon Moses so much so that Moses said, give me all of your power, give me all of your glory. And God said, if you see all of my presence, you will surely die. And so he put Moses into the crick of a mountain. As he passed by, he covered him so that Moses would only see his back. And even with just seeing the back of God's presence and God's glory, Moses' face shone so brightly that as he came down the mountain, people could not even look upon his face. The glory of the Lord shone in Elijah whenever he came in a still small voice. The glory of the Lord shone when he led the shepherds. The glory of the Lord shone when he led the Magi. The people were crying out for the glory of the Lord, the presence of God to come upon them, for them to be in fullness with them. And so God did. The full presence and the full glory of the Lord came the package of a little baby. But if you remember, I just told you that God told Moses that if I show you all of me, you will surely die. That's still true. Because when you come into the full presence of Jesus and the full presence of God, you die to sin and you die to self. You hang yourself on that cross with him. You still die. Behold, we get to arise again, a new creation. We are made new. And behold, he's making things new. It's what he's doing. This is all pointing towards a celebration that we will celebrate and not too long from now, it's going to sneak up on you. In fact, in February, the Lenten season begins. If you've been following along in all of 2023, you will have noticed that what Pastor John and I, with the direction that God had given him to take the church, that we have been showing you where the glory of the Lord has come about, where the glory of the Lord has shown, where the glory of the Lord has been through prayer, through going out and proclaiming the gospel. The glory of the Lord has shown and has continued to shine on Lakewood Methodist Church. And you, as the people called Lakewood Methodist Church, the glory of the Lord is with us. <clears throat> so these people, the Israelite people, are, are upset. This doesn't sound like today. By no means does it sound like anything we can relate to. There's war in the land. There's division of families. There's death. There's murder, there's stealing, debauchery. There are kings calling themselves greater than God. There are people lost and searching for something that they don't know what to find. That doesn't sound anything like today. This is only in the Bible way back then, right? That has nothing to do with today. 
And so these Israelite people say, arise, arise and shine. I don't really feel like shining. Don't you know what's going on in my life? Don't you know what's happening with me? I don't really feel like shining. Arise and shine, for your light has come. You ain't got to worry about shining because it ain't your light that's shining. Your light has come. That means that you didn't have the light. The light came to you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Hmm. Darkness shall cover the earth, thick darkness the people, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. Sometimes in life we can feel like not shining very brightly or you're going through something that nobody in their right mind could understand. Nobody could, could understand the troubles that you're facing. You ever been in that situation where you're just feeling like, I really don't want to talk to anybody. I don't really feel like doing anything. And then somebody comes to you with a problem. Hey, I'm just feeling really down in the dumps, you know. I'm not having a good day. My kids are fighting me to get to school. Blah, blah, blah. And you're looking at them like, are you kidding me? Do you know what I'm going through? I don't really want to hear your problems. I don't really want to deal with what you're dealing with. Let me tell you my problem. Here's the thing. A candle in complete darkness can be seen from miles. The light that shines in you this darkened world and these darkened people are seeking after a light. And do you know what they see inside of you? A light that is not your own. A light that shines, that we reflect. It is the glory of the Lord inside of us that is shining. And people are drawn to you. We're called to go out into the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, making disciples of all of the nations. But then, also, here, it tells you, lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together and they come to you. The glory of the Lord shines so brightly inside of you that these people, these lost sheep, these kings, these leaders of nations are going to come to you, a people who are full of the glory of the Lord, even when you don't feel like it. Because when you come into a relationship with Christ and you die to self and the full glory of the Lord comes upon you, it doesn't matter what the outside of the mirror looks like as long as it's reflecting him and it will consistently do that. It doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. It matters what's inside. It matters that God is going to shine his glory even in the darkest of circumstances. I told you about a time when we were traveling to Colorado and I woke up. Wait, I wasn't asleep. I promise. I, okay, maybe I was. It happens. But we wake up and it's complete darkness all around me. And I look around and I'm like, where are we? Where are we going? But off in the distance, there's these bright red lights that just flicker on and flicker off. Flicker on and flicker off. And I can tell you there was anxiety in between the blinks of light. I was like, oh my gosh, where are we going? Where are we going? Oh, look, that's where we're going. I feel peaceful. I feel calm. Because when you have a light directing your path and you know exactly where you're going, even in the darkness, you can find peace and you can find comfort. That light that shines in you, those people are coming to you because they're seeking peace and comfort and they want what you have. Some of you were here for Christmas Eve where we got to sing wonderful songs to Jesus and then there was a moment in time when all of the lights went out and there were but two candles lit and then we started to pass that flame from one to another. And as all of the flames wove in and out, it began to illuminate this place to be brighter than it is right now. And that all started from one flame, from one light, past from one to another. We were all at once shining the same light so that all could see there was no worry that there were no lights on because we had the light. We had the light and everyone around us had the light so we could see as if it were daylight. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord will shine upon you. 
And those people who are lost and living in a darkened world will come seeking what you have. So give them Jesus. Give them what you have. No matter how you're feeling, it doesn't matter what you're feeling. Give them Jesus because that's who's inside of you. They'll know who you are by the light that shines out of you. They're going to be drawn to it. They can't help themselves. Those people that you've been praying for, those lost, those that seem too far away, God, please bring my son back to you. Bring my daughter back to you. Bring my neighbor back to you. Bring them back to you, God. They're coming. They're coming. It tells us in the prophecy that he says that they will come. They will come. God's promise is never broken. His word shall never return back void. Those people that you have been faithfully praying for, keep praying because they're coming. Those people you've been worried about, keep praying because they're coming. And remember to shine that light because it ain't your light. I remember my dad used to tell me something when I was feeling some sort of way. Tell me, fix your face. Fix your face. I'm like, what? Fix your face, man. People people know who you are. Fix your face. They know whose you are. They know what family you belong to. Fix your face. I wouldn't say that to y'all because that seems a bit harsh, but (laughs) other people need to fix their faces. No, I'm joking. Um, it, it, it was directive from this, and I realized like, very early on that my dad taught me so many things and so many lessons in life, and, and as much as I wanted to tell him, like, gosh, like, just leave me alone. What he was teaching me was scriptural, was biblical, because he knew. He knew people are going to come to you. They're going to come seeking your light. They're going to come trying to find this radiant light that lives with inside of you. Be ready, not only to go out, but be ready for them to come in. So as you go from this place, we can choose to be light and live like we have the light. We can be ready for other people to come to the light. Or you can be unprepared but they're still coming. Another lesson from my dad to you, stay ready and you ain't gotta get ready. They're coming. Go out, pass the light that shines in you. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be your people, that we have the opportunity to shine your light. Lord, we would ask that all that we do bring glory to you, less of us and more of you. And when it comes to a time for us to put down self, Lord, may we do it urgently. May we put down self and give them you. We ask all of this in the name of your Son and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.